New Australian research has found the virus that causes COVID-19 can remain infectious on surfaces such as phone screens and banknotes for up to 28 days, much longer than previously thought. Researchers say the virus begins to deteriorate after seven days, but is still potent enough on surfaces such as glass and stainless steel to infect people two weeks later. Professor Trevor Drew is the director of the Australian Centre for Disease Preparedness at the CSIRO and he joins us now from Geelong. Professor Trevor Drew, welcome. So take us through the study you did. Uh, good morning. Yes. So what we did was we decided that we wanted to understand just what the uh, level of uh, degradation of this virus was over time in the sort of uh, solutions that you might uh, uh, find uh, be, being coughed up by people. So we took a sort of an artificial mucus, if you will, which, which was uh, um, chemically made to uh, simulate the components of, of the sort of mucus that people might be coughing up. Uh, and we suspended a set amount of virus uh, in this solution and then dried it onto different materials and then kept those materials o over time uh, at different temperatures uh, in the dark uh, just to understand uh, what the effect of temperature would have uh, over time or on the survival of the virus. We had an extremely sensitive method of, of detecting the virus and, it, and I would stress this is live infectious virus. This is not uh, the sort of just detecting fragments by uh, the PCR that someone might, people might have heard of. We were actually re-isolating the virus. And what and materials found... did you test it on and at sure. what temperatures and what did you find? Sure. So we tested uh, the various materials uh, at, at 20 degrees, at 30 degrees and at 40 degrees. And the materials we chose were those which you might commonly encounter in the environment. Stainless steel, such as on door handles, uh, cutlery, etc. Uh, glass, um, such as you might find in, in glasses and uh, phone screens, ATM machines, etc. Uh, vinyl. Uh, which is commonly found on grab handles in public transport. Uh, and we also tested paper notes and polymer notes to, to judge whether or not cash might be a, a potential uh, way to transmit virus from one person to another uh, by this method. And we also tried cotton as well. And what we found was that for all of the non-absorbent uh, surfaces, in other words, everything other than cotton, the virus did survive for quite a long time. Um, we, we were able to detect it 28 days after infect, after we'd, uh, we'd contaminated the surfaces. This is recovering live virus back that could then infect our cell cultures. This doesn't mean to say that that amount of virus would be uh, capable of infecting someone. We know from, from other studies, particularly with SARS coronavirus type 1, that on average you need about a 300 particles to, to infect you. So taking that as a, as a guide, we reckon that if you were uh, you know, careless with these materials and, and touched them and then licked your hands or, your, or touched your eyes or your nose, you might well get infected uh, upwards of sort of two weeks after, after they've been contaminated. And so what are the key practical lessons to be taken from this? Well, I think it's the old mantra, keep washing your hands. Uh, and and uh, those people who are uh, responsible for uh, public sur you know, surfaces that could be uh, touched by the general public, keep, keep, keep up that disinfection regime as well. Of course, the other thing that this, this um, uh, study didn't take account of was the fact that as people get, get ill and start to recover, so there are immune molecules in their mucus that might well degrade the virus before it, it, it can uh, actually become infectious again. So, so the, we have to take all of these, uh, these things into account. And of course, the other abiding message is that, that infectious people are far, far more infectious than, than, than surfaces. But nevertheless, it may help to explain why even when we've got rid of the infectious people, we do occasionally get these uh, um, uh, breakouts again, uh, sometimes even in a, in a country which is considered to be free. And so it this, is a tale. tale. Yeah, and does this throw any light on why place, as to why places like Meatworks are particularly vulnerable? Yes, although, although we didn't uh, actually study meat, uh, our, our, uh, the data that we provided, uh, which showed that at 30 degrees and 40 degrees, the virus was quite rapidly uh, 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 degraded. Uh, and, and using a mathematical formula, we were able to predict that uh, uh, if you fall 
forecasts what a something like a, a 12 or 14 degree drop from the 20 degrees, which is the uh, lowest level we tested at, but we could forecast that at something like six degrees, uh, the virus could last about 10 times as long. So, and, and other studies have also showed this, uh, that uh, the virus at, at four degrees or minus 20 uh, stays around for a very long time. Uh, they, they detected virtually no degradation in virus at those sort of temperatures. So for, yeah, month, for months and months on end? Yes, it's quite possible that at minus 20, the virus could uh, last for several months, possibly a year. Oh. Now, some experts are urging caution as to how much can be taken from this study. Uh, one expert in Wales says the respiratory fluid has uh, white cells and enzymes that tackle the virus. And in his view, viruses would still only survive a matter of hours on surfaces because of that. What do you say to that? Well, uh, the, the fact was that when we, when we suspended this uh, virus in, in what we call, might, might call an artificial mucus, uh, it certainly survived for a long time. Now, we know, as I said, that, that people, as they start to mount an immune response, that some of those chemicals may be innate, but some of them are, are acquired. In other words, they are developed uh, as the, as the um, uh, person uh, responds to the infection. So certainly in that sort of situation, uh, we wouldn't expect the virus to last as long. But we, we could only accommodate uh, uh, one variable at a time in order to draw this conclusion that, that under, under these optimal conditions, the virus could survive for quite some time. So it probably represents someone who is uh, at the peak of their uh, virus infection, but has yet to develop any, any immunity. Hmm. So, so it, we have to take it with a, uh, obviously with those caveats in mind. Uh, and, and it would be a good experiment to try to get mucus directly from infected people at various stages of, of their infection uh, and, and see how long the virus survives in, in that sort of scenario. But we did do our best to try to recreate uh, mucus as, as far as we could, which had no immunity within it. And another expert says the study is not too concerning because he understood it was done in the dark and not in light where UV can degrade. What's your response to that? Absolutely right. But we must bear in mind that uh, it, it's direct sunlight that has the UV. If it's gone through windows, uh, the amount of UV is very, very much less, uh, if, if, if any at all. Uh, so, so this does represent uh, uh, an, an inside environment. Uh, but uh, again, we, we have to take those caveats in mind. Yeah. Certainly, as I said previously, direct infection, direct exposure is by far the more important mm. one. But we shouldn't neglect the value of washing your hands uh, and, and the value of disinfecting surfaces that are commonly touched. And after having done this study, what do you say to people who dismiss COVID as a little flu or just like the flu? Well, I think that's obviously uh, out with this experiment, but I think we only have to look at the statistics to see how many people are dying within a month of getting COVID-19 infection, uh, sars cov uh, It's It's not a trivial disease, and uh, particularly for older people, uh, the, uh, uh, the outcomes can be significant, uh, if not fatal. Okay, Trevor Drew from the CSIRO, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. My pleasure.